Good morning, welcome back dear viewers of Imam Hussain TV. I hope you're enjoying the morning. We've had Quran and our Dua session, so we're revitalized and we've got a cup of tea ready because we're going to have quite a deep conversation um, with our dear sister Barak Hussain, who's traveled all the way from Canada to join us. She is a psychotherapist and you can find her on social media as the Muslim counselor. So I'd like to welcome. Asalaamu Alaikum dear sister. Wa Alaikum as -salam. How are you this morning? Alhamdulillah yourself. Good, thank you. We we are going to be, as I mentioned to the viewers, we're going to talk about something um, that I suppose most of us go through in life, um, if not everybody, and it's about grief and um, the loss of a dear one, um, and that loss can be in any capacity. Um, but really, rather me introduce it, I'd really like to hear sort of your experience and you know what, how you would go, because there's several stages and we all respond and react differently. So of course. What, what would you say sort of, how would you want to help our viewers to sort of who may be going through some grief now? Um, somebody's ill, may not be living for long. You know, or what's the different types of bereavement and grief? Big question. Um, I'm hoping lots you're going to break that down. And, inshallah, yeah. I'll do my best. Inshallah, <laughs> with Allah's tawfiq. It's um, everybody responds differently, and what we need to understand that it's a normal response. Your response could be different from the next person, yet that's still normal to you. So we don't know how to respond. A lot of people, when they hear about a loss of a friend um, or a friend of a friend or family, they, they don't know what to say. It becomes very yeah. awkward. You don't know how to comfort. You don't know, you know how, what's appropriate to say, what's not appropriate to say. So we'll get to that a little bit okay. later. Um, just the person who is experiencing a loss of a dear one, and a loss may not necessarily be death, by the way. Mm -hmm. It could be um, the ending of a relationship, a marriage, right. or a friendship. Yeah. There's a grieving process there as well. There's sadness involved, mm -hmm. unless it was uh, you know, an un unhappy relationship and the person's happy to get out yeah. of it. That's a different That's case, different. of course. Yeah. But there are stages, phases rather, mm -hmm. uh, that but people could experience. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, but even in the stages where you've lost a friend or uh, you've come out of a relationship and you're you're happy that it's it's ended but there's still a point where that was right for you and perhaps you know you're still going to go through something of course to, so it's yes. not that we should just think oh you're happy and, but no it's interesting because I think people we often overestimate our emotions so yes I mean you may not necessarily want to get back together with that person mm -hmm. if you experience sadness yeah. uh, because it's it's an ending and there is a sadness to <clears throat> excuse me there is a sadness to endings regardless mm -hmm. so that's again normal and you may experience that, you may not, it really depends. And so when we take a look at that grief mm -hmm. uh, compared to the grief of somebody that is no longer coming back because they've passed on, as we were saying, there are different stages to that. At first, usually people tend to experience um, denial, the shock, mm -hmm. rather shock, mm -hmm. that this happened, um, especially in sudden death, mm -hmm. especially if it was unexpected, a uh, car accident or somebody's taken their own lives, yeah. um, suicide, which is happening, unfortunately, in our community. And we will be talking about that, viewers, um, in the future episodes in the morning, so please do keep tuned with these episodes. So, yeah, this yeah. is an important topic that we af absolutely need to yeah. explore in our communities. Um, so the sudden death could produce that initial shock. Mm -hmm. I find within our Muslim culture, we have strategies to deal with that. Right away when we hear something like that, what do we say? Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajiun. We are from God and to Him we return. Yeah. We say that because that is haq, that's the truth. Yes. We are all going to taste yes. death. We will all experience it in some form of, of our, or another, whether it's the loss of people around us, ending of our lives as yeah. well. So it's very much a part of our culture yes. um, and our awareness, especially when you look at majalis, yes. the grieving that we experience there in Muharram and, di and th different uh, morning times throughout the year. It's part of our yeah. Islamic culture, especially the Shias. So it's a part of our lives that we know this way because we're commemorating deaths of loved ones from long ago, special people, imams in our lives. But it's different when we experience somebody that we know personally. Mm -hmm. But we use the strength that, and we use the perseverance and patience from the majalis, let's say, to apply here. And I find yeah. that a lot, especially with the older generation, yeah. they, they draw upon that to help them with that. And so, I think just before we go to your next point, um, the, 
I think when, because I've recently um, experienced a bereavement of a family member. I'm sorry and, for your loss. Oh, thank you so much, and God bless his soul. But for me, it, you know, even when someone says just those simple words, inna lillahi inna lillahi raji'un, it's about, you cannot question God's decision. We are, we've come with a time, like, you know, time frame, birth and death. It's in his hands, it's in that, you know, whatever his decree is. And it's that submission and acceptance, isn't it? Not to say, but why? And I often find people who perhaps don't have faith will question, but why did that happen? Why do they die so young? And I think we are so blessed to have those words of comfort. As you said, it's huck that, you know what? At the end, Allah wanted that person back and that was their time. And exactly. You, it's, it's the acceptance that yeah. helps. The va it's almost a, a comforting validation when yeah. we hear those words, mm. which reduces the shock mm. of it, right? Some people get into the denial, which is why yeah. you hear the question, why? Yeah. So denial is also another phase that people can experience, especially when we lose young ones. So is it shock? Shock, and then denial. denial. Right. It, these are, I would say, phases. They're not necessarily in that it's order. The, yeah. Everybody right. will experience them okay. differently, but these are some of the phases yes. people could experience. And it's so good shock, to recognize it, isn't it? If in somebody exactly. you think, okay, that person's in that stage. Maybe they're in that stage. Yeah. Denial. Yeah. That no, they're 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 going to come back. They're going to answer my mm. message, my return, my call. I expect them to come in through the door. Yes. It, it's. it's Oh, it's hard, it's, pa it's painful to experience that, but it, again, it's part of those mm. phases. Some people could experience anger. Wow. Yeah, anger. Mm. I've heard people say anger towards God, yeah. right? Anger towards the universe, anger towards the tragedy that took place or what, mm. or the person that caused it, if it was a car accident, for example. Just angry at everybody. Again, with the question of mm. why, mm. right? Like, why did this happen so mm. suddenly, so young? Why is my mother no longer with me? So people could experience that. I find within our communities, uh, because we offer so much support and love mm. and we have special commemorations for those who have yeah. passed on, which provide so much support for the grieving process, Definitely. I don't find a lot of people within our communities experience so much the anger. I find yeah. that with people who don't have strong faith or yeah. don't have the supports that we have yeah. in our culture. Yeah. Um, and then people come to perhaps... And the, even, yes? sorry, I was going to say, even the, the, when the process begins of someone grieving a loss, a death, the fact that, you know, neighbors are coming with food and, you know, yes. taking that responsibility off their shoulders. Be, it helps. To think about the day to day so they can focus on the person they've lost. Maybe do the prayers and think that they need that time to connect to God to, you know, understand and, and go through their emotions, don't they? But in terms of the stages, so we've men you've mentioned two, um, three, sorry, so anger as well. Do you, do you need to go through all of them or do you, can you jump from... Sort of. Again, everybody's different. You may not experience any of these anyway. things and go instantly to the acceptance part, right. which is I accept this happen. I negotiate with my environment. I use the supports and resources around me. Mm -hmm. I've accepted this has happened. Wow. And I find a lot of people within our communities do jump to that. Um, but there are those still struggling with the, the other phases. Yeah. And it depends on their personality. It depends on their coping strategies. It does depend on their faith as well when it comes to oh, death. Yeah. Those who may not have a, an understanding or acceptance of it will struggle more with it. And children probably, you know, they're of developing, course. aren't they? So you could understand those emotions of anger and you know, denial and shock that that child would probably go through something they've had to... And we use different yeah. language with children, yeah. right? We always say, you know, this person is in Jannah now, yeah. this person is in heaven. And so for them it's, okay, they're not here, but, but can I see them again? Oh. So because again, their mm. cognitive development hasn't mm. reached where... Mm. Um, they understand they're no longer coming mm. back, but there's different ways of speaking. Um, I've noticed within our communities, um, we don't right away tell when we break the news, so to speak, we don't right away tell the person, yeah. this person is dead. Yeah. We break it slowly. They're, mm. they're in the hospital. They're yeah. not doing well. Yeah. Um, they're struggling. Okay. Yeah. Um, they didn't make it. So I find they, it's presented softly, yeah. not right away to shock the person. Mm. Is that and, a good way in your... Uh, I've personally experienced that mm -hmm. when um, my uncle and my cousins years ago in Iraq passed away. It wasn't, so. I, had, I had just had a child too, so it wasn't presented yes. to me immediately. With my cousins, I remember that. It was softly and slowly because they didn't state, want me yeah. to, to, re, to react in a, Definitely. especially with vulnerable, you know, exactly. after childbirth. Mm. Um, the experience with my uncle was when I was actually in Iraq. I was living there after I'd graduated university, and um, the news was he, he hadn't, he had gone to visit 
his daughter in another city and had come through Baghdad and was going to visit me before heading back to Karbala. Mm -hmm. And so Karbala kept calling, has he come to visit you? Has he come to see you? I'm like, no, we didn't even know he was coming. But he hasn't come back to us. So I recall myself and my male cousins, they said, you're staying home. I'm like, no, I'm Canadian. I'm coming with you. We don't stay home waiting for news as women. <laughs> mm. um, we went around hospital to hospital to trying to find him. Yeah. So I recall afterwards, um, my cousins did find him, but he hadn't made it. But they didn't tell me right mm. away. They said, oh, we can't find him right now. We'll go tomorrow. But when I yes. arrived back home, yeah. one of my cousins took me into the room and told me, you know, may the rest of your family and like, what do you mean we're going back tomorrow but they slowly mm -hmm. they didn't want to shock me right away in the hospital so sometimes it would you know a part of you knows mm -hmm. that that person mm -hmm. is no longer there and of course it was very shocking but I experienced firsthand what it was like especially in that culture Definitely. how the grieving occurs it's very dramatic mm -hmm. but at the same time quite healing with the family. Yeah. You were there to mourn this person. Mm. Yes, there's spirituality involved, there's a majalis, there's Quran, there's du'as to help in yeah. that and to give to the mm. soul that passed on and to help with the healing and the pain and the love and support was amazing because during the day I saw that people were experiencing the pain and mm. you know giving mm. to each other but in the evening there were laughter and jokes. Yeah. And that's part of it yeah. as well. And, but some people can't accept that, can they? Because they're grieving at such an intensity that they will look at others laughing and think, what do you find funny? And, and I, I experienced that in, in a death that you know, we had in our family. But every, like you said, it's so important to understand that we all grieve so differently. And one thing we mustn't do is judge others of how they Absolutely. do. Because maybe they need that outward. They could be laughing, by yeah, the way, outwardly. And you yeah. go, what's wrong with this person? Yeah. But then... They Inside. haven't come to terms, no. perhaps. There's a saying, and I'm going to paraphrase it, as I don't remember it word mm. for word, but life does not cease to exist mm. when someone dies, and laughter does not cease, something like that, along yeah. the lines that you can still have laughter, yeah. even with pain and grief, Absolutely. that life still continues. It does continue. We've got a couple of minutes left. Um, is there anything else that you want to touch on, that's, you know, perhaps even, even more of the stages, or perhaps in a relationship bereavement, that people go through not to underestimate the emotions, what would you... Consider? It really depends on the connection you've had with that person, of course, right? Mm -hmm. um, but from a mental health perspective, prolonged grief mm -hmm. could lead to isolation, could lead to depression and anxiety right. and other mental health struggles. So you want to be aware of that mm -hmm. as well. You know, if you are struggling, please go reach out, talk to a grief counselor, talk to a sheikh, mm -hmm. talk to a alima, talk to some family and friends that you can connect with and to get that support. You shouldn't you be struggling alone with this. I mean, you, someone as yourself who's, you know, equipped to deal with this kind of stress, do you think we need to do more work in our communities as in have people that are more accessible in your kind of field or do you think sheikhs and alamas should be trained how are we doing in, in our community everything you said above <laughs> yeah. in the sense that sheikhs and alamas would be wonderful if they have counseling skills because mm. they are the front line yeah. front line workers in our community mm. that people turn to right away for supports and i've i've worked with a variety of uh, sheikhs and alamas all mm. over the world and they say Excellent. that to me yeah. and i encourage them please do get some counseling yeah. skills that they they have them already but official counseling skills yeah. where they can do couples grief uh, individual counseling for, uh, for folks in our community, especially mm. from a spiritual religious point Definitely. of view, which is what we need. Alhamdulillah, there are those who have it. There are those who are um, continuing to, to or looking to, to get that training and doing events together to bring awareness and Definitely. normalizing it. And so when we're talking about grief, mm. we need to normalize it in our communities. We need to reach out to those who are struggling, not just because after the funeral, after the burial, after yeah. the 40th, after the year, do we forget about this person yeah, and their exactly. grief? We, we tend to do that, right? Yeah. We'll have the yearly annual. Yeah. But how are they doing in between? In between yeah. That's what's important. This is where the support has to come and in. And actually, even sadly, I've heard people say, oh, why are you still grieving? Okay, it's been a year. And, but like, oh, it really breaks my heart when I hear people saying about others. You think, well, what do you know what they're going through? You don't yeah, know don't what know. their experience is. I mean, you've, you've heard stories of couples, elderly couples who within days apart, yeah, exactly. there was nothing wrong with that other person, but they pass on. Yeah. Why is that? Because yeah. of the deep connection and love that they had. They feel they cannot live without that person. You've, I'm sure you've heard of those stories. Yeah, so it, it's, it's, we cannot judge no. when it comes to mental health because there's a huge mental health aspect to grieving. And part of the tips that I can offer is to continue 
eating well, mm. you don't have an appetite, I understand. Oh, yeah. But please try to continue mm -hmm. eating healthy. Mm -hmm. um, lots of fluids in your system. Still continue your exercise routines. If you don't, please have an outlet for your stress hormones. Continue with things slowly. You know, obviously you need to take time off work and, and yeah. whatnot in school, but we, we try to give the advice of keeping to the routine. At least you have control over that. And this helps you manage yeah. the day-to-days and, and, and ask for support, seek support. Well, it's just, you just covered so much. Um, and I guess there's still so much I could have asked. Um, but as you said, you know, it's, it's really understanding your own emotions, isn't it? And reaching out and, and gaining. And for us as people observing someone else going through that grief, to really reach out. And that's where emotional intelligence comes in. And I know we've had conversations off air about the interlink with faith. Um, but again, as usual, time just flies. Thank you so much. Bless you. Um, inshallah, we'll see you another morning. And um, have a lovely day. Please Thank keep you. us in your da's. And um, next up, we have um, Dr. Yasser Madani and we'll be having another topic about the lungs.